So, folks, there's a lot that we can say about Donald Trump. We we know this. But one thing I think we'll all agree that he is defined by is his hatred of any person that thinks they're equal to him, that has the audacity to think that Donald Trump isn't a quote-unquote God among men, but especially women. When women are powerful and they stand up to him, even if they just exist and don't show him deference, but when they stand up to him, he hates that. And that's exactly what continues to happen with Taylor Swift as she's hosting concerts and has given him the boot, has given him the boot as she hosts these massive arena filling events, something Donald Trump could never ever do to the to the extent she's doing. And he is utterly humiliated by it Yet he continues, as he's been doing for the last few weeks, to beg for her endorsement, which he's never, ever going to get. And this comes at a time where Donald Trump gets humiliated at his own rallies, where no one shows up. They get canceled. They get canceled from bigger arenas down to smaller events. And all of it's absolutely humiliating to him and the wider MAGA movement. So listen to this, which goes into how powerful women continue to humiliate him. And including Jean Carroll and her lawyers that have just dropped an additional bomb on Trump. But listen, when you see this, you're going to see Taylor give Trump the boot and he does not like it. Meantime, former President Donald Trump has been wading into right wing conspiracy theories about Taylor Swift. But now he's talking about the upcoming election. NBC's Garrett Hake is following this story for us. Okay, he kind of went after her on social media or issued a warning. I'll let you interpret it. What did he have to say? Sure. Yeah, Chris, if you're not living at the center of the Taylor Swift, Donald Trump Venn diagram like I am, this might have seemed like it had come completely out of nowhere. But there's been some reporting now for several weeks that the Biden campaign would like to earn Taylor Swift's endorsement at some point. Makes sense. She's probably the most famous person on the planet. Well, on Super Bowl Sunday, Donald Trump made this post on his social media account in which he basically says Joe Biden's never done anything for Taylor Swift and that he passed this Music Modernization Act, which passed in 2018. That's the kind of of thing that should get his her endorsement for him. Also, he makes a comment about liking her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, even though he may be a liberal. This comes, this is sort of has a general basis in reality here about the politics of this. But th this comes as the MAGA universe has been really awash in conspiracy theories about Taylor Swift and her role in politics, about Travis Kelsey and the fact that he's a spokesperson for Pfizer, the vaccine maker. Some of this stuff is really unhinged. And Kelsey was asked about it in the Super Bowl pregame show he dealt with it pretty directly. What do you say to those cranky NFL fans that say it's all a conspiracy theory? <laughs> <laughs> you're all crazy. Every last one of you, you're crazy. Among the conspiracy theories here are that somehow the NFL, the Biden administration, Taylor Swift, we're all working together to get Taylor Swift to the Super Bowl. Uh, the Biden folks had a little bit more fun with this even than Travis Kelsey did, posting this meme of the president with this sort of dark Brandon uh, branding around it, saying after the Chiefs won, it was just like we drew it up. So prior to the 2018 midterms, Taylor Swift was notably and publicly political, which kind of became a little bit of a thing after her silence during the 2016 presidential election, especially given the outcome. But then... In an Instagram post in October of 2018, she publicly endorsed two Democratic candidates running in her home state of Tennessee and said she would vote against Republican Marsha Blackburn. She also talked about this in her documentary as well. And for some conservatives, it was downright unconscionable that she would actually voice her opinions. How dare she? I'm sure Taylor Swift has nothing or no, doesn't know anything about her. And... Uh... Let's say that I like Taylor's music about 25% less now. There's a big difference between these pol these political statements by uh, Taylor Swift and Kanye. Taylor Swift was a virtue signal to try to preserve her reputation among her peers. Taylor Swift, I love your music. Personally, Kanye West, I'm a bigger fan of his. I wish you would have uh, not done this. Well, Stay away from politics. Well, it turned out that last one didn't age so well. But that aside... Swift has become a little bit more vocal since those midterms. I mean, she advocated for LGBTQ plus rights at the Video Music Awards in 2019. She endorsed Joe Biden for president in 2020. And in 2022, she posted some concerns about the impact of the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, which was shared by millions of Americans. 
But it's not like she is some rabid Democratic activist. She's a very famous person who occasionally expresses her views, again, how dare she, and encourages people to get engaged. Last September, she encouraged her 272 million followers to register to vote. She didn't even tell them who to vote for. She just encouraged people to vote. That's a good thing, by the way, participating in the democratic process and all. And in the meantime, when all this is going on, her star has continued to rise, of course. The Eras Tour became a massive cultural phenomenon, and she became a regular cutaway shot at Kansas City Chiefs football games, watching her boyfriend, of course. And then in December, she was named Times Person of the Year for 2023. And that is when things started to get a little weird. After the Time cover came out, Trump advisor Stephen Miller tweeted, quote, what's happening with Taylor Swift is not organic. Okay, I mean... And over in right-wing media, things move to complete meltdown mode around this time. And although neither the NFL nor Travis Kelsey really needs Taylor around, apparently the Democrats do, because make no mistake about it, Taylor Swift is clearly a tool. Taylor Swift is going to come out in the presidential election and she's going to mobilize her fans. So is Swift a front for a covert political agenda? Primetime obviously has no evidence. If we did, we'd share it. But we're curious because the pop star who endorsed Biden is urging millions of her followers to vote. Guys, I mean, are you all OK? Seriously, take a walk. Shake it off, as she would say. Current Trump lackey Vivek Ramaswamy described the conspiracy this way. I wonder who's going to win the Super Bowl next month. And I wonder if there's a major presidential endorsement coming from an artificially propped up couple this fall. Okay, now, first of all, the Kansas City Chiefs have made it to three of the last four Super Bowls. So the fact that they made it again this year is not only not a conspiracy, it is not even surprising. Even to people who only watch football once a year, like <clears throat> me. But beyond that, the idea that the U.S. government tricked Taylor Swift into getting political with a deep state psyop, that idea ignores the actual verifiable reason Taylor Swift decided to go public with her politics in the first place. Here she is in the documentary Miss Americana talking about why she decided to make her first ever political statement in more than a decade of fame. These aren't your dad's celebrities, and these aren't your dad's Republicans. Well, imagine if we came to you and said, hey, we've got this idea that we could halve the number of people that come to you next to it. And the other thing, just from a security so standpoint, you think people... Taylor Swift comes out against Trump. I don't care if they write that. That was Taylor Swift in 2018. Right after that scene, Taylor Swift endorsed the Democratic competitor to Republican Marsha Blackburn in the Tennessee Senate race. Clearly... Ms. Swift knew that she could lose fans over that decision. But this wasn't about popularity, and it wasn't because the Democratic deep state spiked her coffee. Taylor Swift got political because, it seems, she actually cared about the issues. Here she is talking about why she couldn't support Marsha Blackburn in that Senate race. It really is a big deal to me. She votes against, against fair pay for women. She votes against the reauthorization. So that is why Taylor Swift waded into politics. And that is why in 2020, she endorsed Joe Biden for president. And as it turns out, getting political does not seem to have hurt Taylor Swift. In the years since she endorsed Biden in 2020, Taylor Swift has gone on what is arguably one of the most successful tours ever. All around the globe, she is selling out the biggest venues imaginable. Her concerts are so popular that the Federal Reserve says her tour literally boosted the national economy. So why can't the right believe that Taylor Swift is just naturally popular and naturally believes the things she believes? Why can't the right believe that the Kansas City Chiefs got to the Super Bowl because they're just really good at football? Why can't they believe that two popular foxy celebrities might actually just want to date each other? Well, usually when someone comes up with a conspiracy theory, it's because they don't want to believe the truth. In this case, I think Republicans and the Trump team in particular don't want to believe how grossly unpopular their policies are. And instead of changing their unpopular policies, they are doubling down on them. We see in poll after poll that upwards of 60 percent of Americans support the right to an abortion. Abortion access is incredibly popular. And yet 
New reporting out of Politico today shows that right wing organizations are already drafting executive orders for Trump to sign on day one if he is reelected. Orders that would outlaw the most common form of medication abortion and bar Americans from being able to get abortion medications in the mail. While 57 percent of Americans say they would not vote for Donald Trump if he was convicted of a felony, Rolling Stone is out with new reporting this week that Donald Trump is plotting a way to give presidents legal immunity for life, assuming he is reelected. The list goes on while the majority of Americans support the Affordable Care Act. Trump says he wants to repeal it. While the majority of Americans didn't support Trump's 2017 corporate tax cuts, Trump says he wants to pass a new round of them if he is reelected. Republicans don't want to own up to the reality that their ideas are hugely unpopular and that what they are doing right now, today, is making their party more and more unpopular every day. So rather than accept the reality, the right has created its own reality. And in doing so, the right is kind of telling on itself. Over the weekend, <laughs> it's, it seemed like Trump kind of came awfully, I'm not a lawyer, but he came awfully close to defaming your client again. So let's just listen to that. And I just want to talk about it on the other side. We haven't done anything wrong. We've done nothing wrong. This last case is we haven't done anything wrong. How about the one two weeks ago? A woman, I'm saying, who the hell is she? Who is the woman? It's so unfair what's happening in our country. Our court system is a mess. So I'm just going to restate for everyone. Trump knows exactly who your client is. He was found liable for sexually abusing her and then defaming her by lying about it. Do you watch these? And could this warrant a third suit as you watch that? Uh, we certainly watch them. It's hard. It's hard not to. Every time Donald Trump speaks, um, you know, I think, as we said at trial many times, he has the biggest megaphone in the world. Uh, and so everyone hears them, including us and including our client, E. Jean Carroll. And as you said, um, what he said was uh, was absolutely a lie. Two unanimous federal juries have found that not only did Trump know who E. Jean was, he sexually assaulted her um, and and lied about it repeatedly. Everything he's said about her over the last five years has been a lie um, and has been defamatory. So we're watching, we're listening. Um, we had really hoped that uh, as I think the jury found, um, that $83 million would maybe be enough to convince him to keep E. Jean Carroll's name mm -hmm. out of his mouth. Um, Apparently, he showed us this weekend that he really cannot control himself and that maybe it wasn't. Um, but, you know, we'll see what what happens as as this continues to play up. You're watching them. I'm sorry. You have to watch all of these, all of these, just like the rest of us do. Sean Crowley, thank you so much uh, for joining us this evening.